Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey everyone, Firemage is one of the top casters in 3v3 right now, bringing what seems like some of the highest burst damage in the game, and with the majority of it being instant. So how do you play around that? Well, we've consulted with Wildcard Gaming's very own Mage Mastermind, Maro, and asked him for his top 5 tips on how to counter Fire Mage. Welcome to Knowing Your Enemy. Our first tip on this list is going to be all about combustion. This, as you probably know, is Fire Mage's biggest offensive cooldown. And when I say biggest, I mean it. I don't think there is a single other offensive cooldown even close to the power of combustion right now. Sure, destruction could be comparable, but combustion is all instant and is what enable mages to do so much burst damage. Okay, so combustion, big damage, got it. What can I do to counter this though? Well, combustion is one of those cooldowns you just have to show respect to. The second you see this popped, always look to trade defensives, trinkets, you name it. This is the time you should be most scared. Not respecting this cooldown or trading defensives appropriately will result in your demise. So before you say, well, anybody could have told me that, well, understanding where the damage comes from can help us to further counter combustion. When a fire mage bursts, a standard rotation will look something like this. Meteor, combustion, and then they just rotate fire blasts and pyro blasts. Well, these spells are surprisingly not what deals the ton of the overall damage that you'll see in their burst window. The majority of this damage actually comes from the stacked ignite afterwards. When a fire mage deals damage, a portion of that damage is turned into a ticking debuff called ignite. When a mage pops combustion, they save all of their damage and all of their spells crit on top of gaining a huge boost to ignite damage. So this ignite is going to be huge. What you can do about this though, is to instantly dispel the mage's ignite if you're a healer. This will then reduce a lot of the mage's overall damage and just give you a higher chance at survival. And the last thing to do with combustion that I want to mention is the fact that this super strong offensive cooldown is actually a magical buff. This means classes with offensive purges such as demon hunters, priests, warlocks, shamans and even other mages can all abuse this fact and then instantly dispel it rendering the cooldown useless. One thing to take from this is that the combustion is super scary and you should do everything at your disposal to play around it. If you've ever faced a fire mage you'll know that their burst seems to be almost unrivaled. Well a large chunk of this comes from their talent Meteor. Meteor is a 45 second cooldown that hits extremely hard especially when combined with combustion, as this is core to a mage's burst rotation. Well, Meteor can actually be abused in multiple ways. First is that the damage it deals can be shared. So say for instance you're facing Rogue Mage, they kidney shot your teammate and proceed to look to burst him. If you go within 8 yards of him, you'll share half of the initial damage of Meteor, reducing the mage's damage tenfold. Not to mention, Meteor is a great cooldown for healers to look out for. When used, this will leave a small zone on the floor that deals some very low damage, and this zone lasts for 8.5 seconds. This means when you see a mage drop Meteor, you can use this as a way to avoid all crowd control as whilst inside, any polymorph effects will instantly break. The same goes for Shadow Priests. You can look to grip your healer inside if they're caught inside of any form of crowd control. Fire Mage's most unique ability that other mages don't provide is their crowd control Dragon's Breath. Part of the reason Fire Mage is so strong right now outside of their burst damage is just how good this ability is. Fire Mages love to use Dragon's Breath as a surefire way of securing crowd control onto healers, and this is their easiest way of doing so. This means as a DPS it's up to you to stop this happening. When you see a mage blink in or Dragon's Breath your healer, try to always stop the follow up polymorph. This will then greatly reduce their chances of landing any follow up crowd control and enable you to live longer. 
Fire has a lot of variation in their PvP talents, and a few of these not only define their playstyle, but also what you should be on the lookout for. The three that are most important to look out for are Fire Starter, Flame Cannon, and of course Greater Pyroblast. Okay, so Greater Pyroblast is something you should always pay attention to. This PvP talent enables mages to cast a 4.5 second spell that will always deal 35% of your maximum health, which is an absurd amount. Let one or two of these through and then the mage can combine this with the rest of their burst to instantly score a kill. If you see a mage playing this, you cannot afford to ever let him free. You need to be either training him and rendering this spell useless, forcing him to have to kite, or by making sure to line a sight or interrupt the cast. Always be aware though that mages can blink whilst casting with their ability Shimmer, so even if you think you're safe and line of sighting, always consider that the mage can blink twice and reach you anyway. Greater Pyroblast though isn't the only important PvP talent to take note of. Flame Cannon is another one that can catch you off guard if you don't pay attention to it. Flame Cannon can be identified by a buff on the mage. What this does is give the mage a stack that then increases their damage by 3%, but more importantly, their range. When fully stacked, this will give the fire mage an extra 15 yard range. So if you think you're outranging that polymorph or greater pyroblast, and still get hit anyway, this is more than likely why. Our final PvP talent to take note of is Firestarter. While admittedly being a little harder to identify, if you don't see the other two PvP talents, this is most likely picked up. You can also tell by if the mage is generally casting quite a lot of fireballs. What Firestarter does is it reduces the cooldown of their combustion for every fireball hit by 5 seconds. Why this is so important though is that as combustion is so potent of an offensive cooldown, you can often be caught off guard thinking that the mage doesn't have it ready. And if you let the mage get this back too fast, then you'll often find you don't have defensives available. How to counter this is by just paying more attention to the mage's fireball casts. Whilst they don't usually deal heavy damage, lining, interrupting or locking the mage down will greatly reduce the amount of combustions that he can get. So we've all been there. Playing a melee or even a caster in some cases versus a mage can seem like a nightmare. Tons of slows, tons of roots, how do you ever even touch them? Well, fire inherently has none of this. Outside of Flame Strike, which nobody uses, Fire Mages have zero slows and only one route on a 30 second cooldown. What this means is that they make for great targets to train down. Not only will you be able to have great uptime, deal high damage and get good pressure, but you will also be able to heavily lock the mage down, forcing them to have to kite, which in turn will heavily reduce their crowd control their ability to deal damage greater or reduce the cooldown of their combustion with fire starter. Training a mage will also limit his ability to get crowd control greatly, as often mages like to use their shimmer as a way to reach your healer to secure that crowd control. Going onto a mage will force him to have to use shimmer charges defensively, giving your healer a much easier job at avoiding crowd control. Alright then guys, that's going to be our top 5 tips in order to counter fire mage. Hope this was useful and be sure to let us know what class you want to see next. Thanks for watching.